In this mechanical age, here is the saga of flight. Sleek, unearthly, all speed and fire, strange shapes sweep through the heavens. For thousands of centuries, man was earthbound. Yet in the few brief decades since his conquest of the air, he has created jet-propelled ships of the sky capable of soaring 100,000 feet into the atmosphere, of spewing forth scores of rockets in a single deadly burst, of spanning oceans and continents as a matter of daily routine, of traveling 17,000 miles nonstop, of rising straight up or diving straight down, of hurtling through space at nearly three times the speed of sound, of beating the sun itself around our spinning globe. It all began at Kitty Hawk. A monument marks the spot where in 1903, two brothers named Wilbur and Orville Wright made history's first powered flight. Their achievement stirred men's souls. And in the wake of the Wright brothers came the Wrong Brothers. One pioneer unveiled his parasol plane, built to fly the Pacific. It didn't. This Frenchman was content to pedal over Paris, but he could never quite raise the foot power. Wing bicycles were popular among inventors. Low running cost, and since they never got off the ground, perfect safety. In California, a beer barrel plane made mouths water, and this in the days of prohibition. The principle was logical enough. You rose by scooping up the air like a bucket scoops up water. The year of the flapper called forth the flapper plane. You turned the crank and the blades revolved like a giant electric fan. Maybe it didn't go any place, but it was cool, man, cool. This sky leviathan could go anywhere, as long as you pulled it. Though its paddle wheel wings revolved wildly, the gray goose was merely a homing pigeon destined to remain back in its own backyard. In England, one aeronaut decided that no blooming sparrow was going to steal a march on him. Pushing the pedals makes the wheels turn and the wings flap up and down. The trouble with this contraption is that he'll have a charley horse long before he gets a close-up look at a cloud. Poised precariously on a Connecticut bridge, this inventor might become an eagle, but he has a better chance of becoming an angel. His bat wing special needs just one accessory, a towel. Now an awesome moment as the first rocket plane is fueled for a precedent-shattering flight. An asbestos-clad scientist lights the fuse, then runs for cover. There's no telling how far this revolutionary rocket ship may travel perhaps into outer space, perhaps to the very moon. With the first rocket mail years later, science marches on. Vast improvements have been made on the early primitive rocket. And now... That's what happened to the letter you've been expecting. In Toledo, an inventive genius gets all juiced up to prove the hard way that every man can be his own rocket ship. And away we go. Rocket schmocket. Sam, you made the pants too hot. In the early 20s, aeronauts strove to perfect a strange windmill on wheels called the helicopter. This French model flew for only a few precarious moments and never got as high as an elephant's eye. Yet its achievement was a new world record and an important advance in aviation. Pile for the wood, she's running wild. A pilot could easily lose his head if he ran in the wrong direction. Early helicopters were dangerous. Careful, men, watch out for tricks. In Detroit, the first umbrella helicopter makes its bow. As light as lead and cast iron could make her, this undergrown carousel was supposed to jump into the air. Try this on your next hangover. Back in France, there appeared a new kind of copter driven by a pair of oversized pinwheels. This aerial bucking Bronco had the stability of an intoxicated chorus girl and required a ground crew skilled in the 100-yard dash. A 
gas bag and a pilot were added for control. Hmm, some control. Just let her loose and where she goes, nobody knows. They called her the flying sausage, but to that perspiring ground crew, she was just a lot of baloney. This is how they got air sick back in 1921. Featuring the upsweep wing, this sturdy plane was designed for intercontinental flight. With luck, it might get across the street. Here is the short, short story of the Seagull plane, which in the realm of flight was just successful enough to be a crashing failure. Germany, Otto Lilienthal bets on a sure thing by imitating the flight of birds, even the flapping wings and feathers. But when the swallows come back to Capistrano, Otto won't be along. Up in Maine, the wooden eagle is unveiled to a waiting world. Those who came to ridicule remain to watch in amazement as it flies to pieces. Chicago produced the Ferris wheel plane, which is tied down securely to keep it from heading straight for the heavens. The motors respond with a mighty roar. What grace, what power, what speed, what design. What a mess. Smiling and confident, an English wizard flaps the ailerons of his reclining or divan-type one-man glider. The principle is supremely simple. When the car reaches airspeed, off he'll fly to whirl and loop happily overhead. The car races across the sands. The great event is close at hand. Faster, 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 and there he goes. I suppose you might call that hop a flop. Mr. Sauvin of France has invented an absolutely safe glider. Mr. Sauvin believes in safety. Look at the spot he's picked to try it out. So long, Mr. Sauvin. Oh, well, guess it needs a few minor adjustments. This you'll have to see to believe. That glider's made of rubber, and in a moment you'll find out why. The harder it hits, the quicker it snaps back into shape. And the pilot didn't even get mussed. A fitting climax to our study of aviation's also rans is the seven-layer plane. With seven wings and a fast man at the pedals, it should be able to fly seven times as high. For the trial run, a couple of wingmen provide history's first jet-assisted takeoff. Now, the big moment. That's all there is. 